Hey there! In this video, I'm going to show you a way that I came up with to move and therefore animate the UVs of an object um, with limitations, of course, um, so that you could move this controller with uh, and have it be part of the rest of your rig and slide a texture around the face. Uh, so something like CoffeeBot here, where his face is a screen or some other robot type thing, um, or perhaps more like a Lego uh, head where the face is textured on, um, or it could be so used for something else completely that uh, I can't think of at the moment. Now I'm going to explain how I have this set up and how I got the UVs to move, but basically if I click this and then I click this um, so that I, I can see the UVs over here, if you notice what's happening, all that I'm really doing is moving the UVs around um, and oops, and that makes it look like the texture is changing position. But it's actually staying in the same place and the UVs are what is moving. And then I make sure that I don't start repeating the face or whatever by limiting how far this controller can actually uh, move so I don't start seeing you know, the next uh, copy of the sh of the face texture coming into screen. Um, so this is kind of the first version of this that I came up with. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has invented some sort of similar technique or if there's some reason why this is secretly a bad idea, but as far as I've been able to tell, um, this will work pretty well for um, anything pretty simple that involves animating a a uh, screen like surface or like in like a Lego head or something like that. So now that I've shown you what it looks like, I'm just going to explain how I set it up. So I'm going to pause on my end and open up the blank scene and th then we'll set it up from there. So um, I have the surface shader on his face so that there's no uh, kind of light hitting it uh, in any way and um, it is layered texture but I only have one layer in for right now. Now one thing that I was having issues with um, outside of the video recording was getting the texture to show up here and I believe um, that had to do with the file path so you might want to check your file path for um, your texture when you have that loaded in um, and make sure that you have your project set correctly and all that because right now it worked uh, it's working when I have it just set to source images and then the name of the image uh, rather than some other uh, file path there so now I can see this in here and if I move my UV shell around you know this is basically the look I'm trying to achieve so even though that his face has already been UV'd in this context and I already created um, a texture map for his face, the way that my method is going to work is that we're going to redo a planar map projection onto his face from the front. And then we're once that gets applied, we're going to have a history item over here. And we're not going to delete that history item. We're going to keep it so that we can modify the settings. So in my UV view, I can easily just go to create and do a planar map. And I'm going to have this come from Z axis. And um, we could click keep image height width ratio. Um, and we're going to end up with this. Now, obviously, um, this doesn't line up perfectly with the texture, but that's OK. We could always um, adjust that. And the other thing that we'll notice is that um, this gets a little bit distorted when uh, we get really far to the side. So what I may also want to do is just do an um, unfold operation. And unfolding it like that seems to um, have solved that issue, even though it didn't seem like a lot changed. So now my only history items on this are the polyplanar projection, because the unfold does not leave a history. So the two things that we're after are projection center Y and projection center X. 
and x if i move, if i adjust that value here we can see that will scoot my um, initial projection off to the left and right and if i change the y then that will lift it up now of course the one slight problem with the y is that it's starting at this weird value for some reason so we might have a little bit of trick uh, of trouble lining that up perfectly but honestly if you're doing this from scratch what you may want to do is do this whole part first then export your uv snapshot and create your texture um, to be designed for wherever this is at its default setting rather than uh, what i did which was already have a texture from a previous version of the character and trying to line that up but anyway um I guess I can't select that because I, there we go. And I'm just going to kind of move this all the way up here. So it's just barely in the frame. And that looks like his face is back to where it was supposed to be. Um, maybe a little bit too low, to be honest. Again, just to reiterate, you may want to make your texture based off of the initial placement of the UVs um, after doing the planar map rather than trying to manually adjust it like I was just doing. So I'm actually going to just close this for right now. Sorry, I forgot to minimize that. And um, my next thing that I can do is create a controller for the face. So I have a controller here just for uh, the head. This isn't moving because I had to unskin it, so that's okay. Um, so I just want to create another controller for the face. So I'll create another NURB circle. And I'll put it in a group. And I'm just going to kind of quickly use snapping by holding down the V key to snap this somewhere around here doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it to be basically centered at least in X. And then I can move this out forward. And then in component mode, I can, you know, change the shape of this as I want. Now, I'd, I'd probably spend a little bit more time designing this. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to kind of... Um, I don't, um, what am I even doing right now? I keep misclicking things. Um, you could, you can snap these two by holding V. And uh, I'll snap in these guys so that he just has this rounded rectangle for the time being. Um, so this will be my controller. So I'll probably want to, to name this, you know, like CBI control. And I might delete the history for that. And the group can just be CBI offset or something like that. And the group is what we'll use to attach this to the head at the end of the rig. Now, for the eye control, I'm not going to need rotation or scale. So if I want to do, I could lock and hide those. And I do want to keep rotation. Actually, I don't need translate Z either, so I could lock and hide that. And I want to create an attribute and call this I X and I might give this a minimum and maximum. Um, oops. I might give this a minimum and a maximum of just something like five and negative five or something like that um, because I don't want it to be able to go too, too far. Um, and I'll add that, and then I'll do another one called, oh my gosh, my uh, I, Y. And I'll add that. Now, um, these are not going to do anything, of course, because they are just blank attributes that I made. But what we'll, what we'll do now is we'll go into set driven key menu. And I'll load in the 
controller as the driver and now I'm going to have to load in this planar projection as the driven so I can try clicking it right over here and then clicking driven and that usually works so I could highlight it here and then I basically need to say okay well translate x or sorry i x um, goes to projection center x and they're both at their default position right now so I'll just hit key and we can see over here this history item can be keyed or driven keyed in this case um, and then I'll bring my value up to five and this is where I can now decide how far I want the face texture to be able to go so if I only want the eye to be able to go up to the very edge I can just kind of manually figure out what value that should be at so 3.8 and then I will hit key again and now I just have to change this to negative 5 and this will presumably be at negative 3.8 and hit key again so now without even looking at this window I can animate the face going from side to side just by toggling this driven key attribute and I can do the same thing for Y which would be pretty much the same thing key it at zero bring this up to five this has to be brought up to you know however high I want that to be able to go I might clip it a little bit so that he can like look like he's looking really high up there and then bring this back down to negative five and adjust this down here And now I can animate up and down and also side to side and those two things can exist simultaneously without conflicting with each other and now since I don't really feel like keying these attributes directly I'm gonna do one last step um, well technically I guess two steps but this is the last big step and that is to connect the regular old translate X and Y into these two attributes so um, I can go to my connection editor load make sure this is loaded in the left which it already is and I also have uh, show non keyable unchecked otherwise I'd have like a million things in here I only want things that I can key and speaking of which I can also load it in on the right because I'm actually connecting two attributes on the same controller so we want the attributes um, or yeah we want uh, translate X to go into I X and that's now yellow and translate Y to go into I Y and now it seems like you know there might be some sort of like cycle error or something but there's actually not um, these things you know it seems weird to have these two things uh, on the same controller but um, this is just a little bit more intuitive than just manually typing you know adjusting values in these two driven keys and of course I can set these back to zero now the reason that I um, created these driven keys in case you're wondering is that um, if you just directly connect the translate X into the poly or projection center X and Y um, the numbers are identical so that would mean that if this controller was at zero then the projection center Y would be at zero and when this is at zero it's actually like there so um, that's why I came up with this uh, routing through a driven key and then using the connection editor thing and so the last thing that we could probably do is um, bring this up um, and set some limits on this so go to my trans uh, attribute editor go to limit information for translate say y maximum five minimum negative five how do I know I want these numbers well that's those are the numbers that I put in as the top and bottom of the driven key and then horizontally speaking um, that maxes out at 3.8 or was it 3.8 
Oh, well, no, it would just need to be 5. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> 3.8 was the value of the projection center thing. So uh, we don't actually need that. So <laughs> I was over overthinking that a little bit. This would also just be 5 and then negative 5 for the minimum. And now I don't have to, I can, I can only move these a certain distance and I don't even have to worry about accidentally like sending my eye controller flying off into the scene somewhere. And then last but not least, I would take this group and parent it um, either directly to the head controller or perhaps directly to um, one of the joints, like maybe the head joint. Um, I could grab that first and then grab the group and parent constrain it. And now his face will stay. Oh, I forgot to skin that. Uh, let me just quickly reattach that. I like to use just a single joint skin bind. And voila. Now we can move that around. This group is in its own local space. If we set the tool to object mode, we can now continue to move his face all around and we can uh, animate it from there. And one last thing to wrap this up, um, I am looking at how we could possibly have to like use UV sets um, to kind of have two separate controls for like the eyes and the mouth as two individual textures that can both be animated simultaneously. Um, still looking into that. The other thing is that um, this concept of using the planar projection map, you could still use this in addition to having, um, you know, a layered texture um, with multiple images in it. So you could still be swapping out images um, or even putting in an animated texture with an image sequence um and having an animated texture play like blinking or or his mouth talking and then um, still be able to move the texture around the face like this all right well hopefully that was useful for everybody and if i once i make any discoveries about um, pushing this idea further i will try to record a video about that too all right hope you enjoyed this and have a good day